make sure if you subscribe or have already to click the notification bell to turn on all notifications so you never miss an upload. One of the most despicable things to inflict upon someone is an acid attack. If the victim does not pass away, they can be left permanently disfigured, which is why many sick and twisted individuals have turned to using acid as a means to destroy someone's life. Acid attacks have become a problem in many places of the world and are mainly used by jealous exes to disfigure their ex-partners or used in gang revenge attacks. Katie Piper was born in 1983 and lived in London in the UK. After she finished school, she trained as a beautician. Her keen interest for fashion and beauty fueled her ambitions to pursue a career in modelling. Katie was taking part in various shoots for national newspapers and was the runner-up of the 2006 Miss Winchester beauty pageant. In 2008, she met a man named Daniel Lynch. Daniel had noticed her through her TV appearances on late night TV sales shows. He had sent her some flattering messages on social media and the two began talking. This then progressed to them meeting in person and starting a relationship. During the first couple of weeks, Katie was satisfied and happy with how the relationship was going. But two weeks into their relationship, things drastically changed. They both had gone out for a meal together and had planned to go to a hotel room after. Katie had told Daniel that she was unsure if she wanted to continue their relationship. Once they got inside the hotel room, Daniel began to beat Katie and forced himself upon her. He then got a razor blade and threatened to cut her and made threats that he would hang her. He also grabbed a knife and started to stab her several times in the arm. After eight terrifying hours at the hotel, the two left, and Katie went to hospital to get treated for her stab wounds. Upon seeing the nature of the injuries she had sustained, doctors became concerned for her well-being, so Katie was withheld by the police as she was scared of Daniel. Now this kind of experience is enough to be extremely detrimental to someone's mental health, and could scar someone for life but Daniel would soon show how truly evil and cruel he could be. He began to bombard Katie with phone calls and texts, apologising for his behaviour. Two days after the attack in the hotel room on the 31st of March 2008, Daniel managed to convince Katie to go to an internet cafe to read an email he had sent her, but this had been part of a premeditated plan. Daniel had arranged for an accomplice to throw sulfuric acid into her face. As Katie made her way to the cafe, she remembers a man approaching her with what she thought was a cup of coffee. Katie believed that the man was homeless and in need of money, so she began to reach into her purse to get some money out for him, but he unexpectedly and suddenly threw the acid in the cup in her face. Katie immediately felt a strong burning sensation and she ran into a cafe and asked for help from anyone inside and screamed for somebody to call an ambulance. At first, she believed her face was actually on fire. People inside the cafe didn't know how to help or what to do. The liquid was clear and they probably just couldn't tell just how bad the situation was. For a large proportion of the people in there, the bystander effect kicked in and most ignored her screams. The entirety of the attack was captured on CCTV, but due to strict community guidelines, I won't be able to show the full clip, but here is part. Finally, an ambulance arrived nearly one hour after the attack. They were worried that the man that threw the acid might still be in the area, so they refused to go into the cafe to treat her until the police also arrived. While Katie waited for the paramedics to come inside, she says she remembers part of her face coming off, and she also remembers hearing a horrendous screaming sound. 
She was so dazed by the attack, she didn't realise it was coming from herself. Katie had suffered third degree burns on her face, body and hands. The acid had eaten away her eyelids and she had lost some of the vision in one of her eyes. Most of her nose was destroyed and part of one of her ears. She had also swallowed some of the acid and had severe internal injuries too. She was unable to speak so she wrote notes to her mother in the hospital to communicate. On one of those notes, she begged her mother to end her life for her. Daniel had hired a man named Stefan Sylvester to carry out the attack for him. Both Daniel and Stefan were arrested. Her injuries were incredibly severe, but luckily she was able to receive radical and pioneering surgery to reconstruct her face. This treatment was not available in the UK, so she had to travel to France. She was put into a medically induced coma for 12 days. The surgeons completely removed the skin from Katie's face and replaced it with a skin substitute called Matroderm to rebuild the foundations for a skin graft. This procedure was the first of its kind to be done in a single operation. Katie wrote a victim impact statement in the aftermath of the attack. She wrote, When the acid was thrown at me, it felt like I was burning in hell. It was an indescribable, unique torturous pain. I have lost my future, my career, my spirit, my body, my looks, my dignity. The list goes on. All I am left with is an empty shell. A part of me has died that will never come back. This is worse than death. Stefan Sylvester was given a life sentence with a minimum term of six years for throwing the sulfuric acid at Katie. He was released in 2018. The parole board said he had displayed empathy for Katie and expressed remorse and shame for his actions. In 2019, he was recalled for committing a string of offences. But as of now, he is free again. Her ex-boyfriend Daniel Lynch was jailed for life with a minimum term of 16 years. He cannot be considered for release until 2025. After the attack and initial treatment, Katie had to wear a plastic face mask for 23 hours a day, which flattened the scars and helped retain moisture. Katie has spoken about how she became scared of people, and in particular, men. She left the flat where she lived and moved back in with her parents, who helped care for her. She also struggled to speak to people about what had happened to her. Katie became scared of anyone approaching the house and became almost paralyzed with fear when the doorbell would ring. At just the age of 25, it seemed her life was destroyed. For over a year, Katie stayed indoors. She only left the house to see the doctors. This wasn't just because of fear, but because members of the public would make comments as they passed her and stare. Katie recalls some people would ask her if they could catch whatever she had, thinking that she had some kind of disease. It's disturbing that there are people out there in this world that would do this to someone. The severe and permanent scarring of the face and body, along with the victims often becoming blind, causes serious social, psychological and economic issues for the victim. But Katie has managed not to let this attack dominate her life entirely. She has stated that she still struggles with depression from what happened to her. She is now a popular British television presenter, philanthropist and model. She has featured in popular television shows such as Strictly Come Dancing and among many others. She is a regular host of Loose Women, Good Morning Britain and This Morning. She has also written four books and founded a charity called the Katie Piper Foundation, dedicated to helping those who survive severe burns get the treatment they need. She has also become a role model for acid attack survivors, showing that it is indeed possible to build a career and a life after an attack. She also started a relationship with a man named Richard James Sutton in 2014. The two have gone on to have two daughters together. A lot of the stories on my channel are bleak to say the least, but once in a while it's somewhat refreshing to see a survivor flourish 
after they have faced such a traumatic attack. It's also incredibly satisfying to see her pursue her dream of becoming a model. She is now one of the faces of an extremely popular hair care company and has been featured on billboards promoting their products.